Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the problem 200 squared minus 199 squared. And to solve this problem, I actually have three different methods. So make sure to stick for all three of the methods to find out which one is the best one for you. So for method number one, what I'm going to do is rewrite 200 squared as 199 plus 1 squared. So now I have 199 plus 1 squared minus 199 squared. And if I have something in the form a plus b squared, this is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now this means that 199 plus one squared, this should equal 199 squared plus two times 199 times one plus one squared. And this is equal to 199 squared plus 398 plus 1, which is equal to 199 squared plus 399. So, this means that 200 squared minus 199 squared is equal to, well, this right here is 200 squared. So 199 squared plus 139, and now I have this minus 199 squared. So 199 squared and negative 199 squared, these two cancel out, and all I'm left with is 139. Or sorry, this is actually 399. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with 399. So this is my answer. Now for method number two, my problem was 200 squared minus 199 squared. And now for this method, what I'm gonna do is rewrite 199 squared as 200 minus one squared. So in our first method, we wrote, we wrote 200 squared as 199 plus one squared. This time we're gonna rewrite 199 squared as 200 minus one squared. So now, if I have something in the form a minus b squared, this is equal to a squared minus two ab plus b squared. So 200 minus one squared is equal to 200 squared minus 2 times 200 times 1 plus 1 squared. And now this is equal to 200 squared minus 400 plus 1, which is equal to 200 squared minus 399. So this is the value of 199 squared. So 200 squared minus 199 squared is going to equal 200 squared minus 200 squared minus 399, which is equal to 200 squared minus 200 squared plus 399. So then these two cancel out, and then this is equal to 399. So that is my second method. And now finally for method number three, I have 200 squared minus 199 squared. 
And I know from methods one and two, what I did was I rewrote either one of these, but now I'm simply gonna just use a property that says a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. And I'm gonna use this property on here. So this means that I get 200 plus 199 times 200 minus 199. 200 plus 199 is 399, and 200 minus 199 is simply one. So I get 399 times one, which is just 399. And as you can see, this is, properly, is probably the most efficient out of the three methods because I've solved it the fastest. So whenever you see something in the form a number squared minus another number squared, always use this property because it's really helpful to solving your problem fast. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be solving the equation eight to the power of x is equal to 88. So my only variable in this equation is x. So that's what I'm gonna be solving for. And now for my solution. I'm going to first start by rewriting my equation down here so I have a little more solving space. So my equation is 8 to the power of x is equal to 88. Now I'm first going to start by taking the log on both sides. So I get log of 8 to the power of x is equal to log of 88. Now, if I have something in the form log of a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front. So it's going to equal b times log a. In this case, I have log a to the power of x, and I can move x to the front. So I get x times log 8 is equal to log 88. And the reason this property is so useful is be because before, x was an exponent. And for our equation, if x is 1, I get 8. If x is 2, I get 64. And if x is 3, I get 64 times 8, which is 512. And we want to find what value of x results in 88, which is somewhere in between 2 and 3 but we don't ex know exactly where because it's gonna be a decimal. So we can't really find the exact value as x when x is in uh, ex exponent form. So this is why we can make it into a real term using this property, and now it's much simpler to solve for it. So now I have x times log 8 is equal to log 88. And I wanna isolate x because that's what I'm solving for, so I'm gonna get rid of this log 8 by dividing both sides by log 8. So now these two cancel out and I get x is equal to log 88 over log 8. Now log 88, I can rewrite this as log of 8 times 11. So I have log of 8 times 11 over log 8. And now another property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form log of a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. So log of 8 times 11 is going to equal log of 8 plus log of 11, and I have this over log of 8. Now, if I have something in the form a plus b over c, this is equal to a over c plus b over c, which is a simple fraction property. So log 8 plus log 11 over log 8, I can write that as log 8 over log 8 
plus log 11 over log 8. Now, log 8 and log 8 cancel out to get 1. So I get 1 plus log 11 over log 8. So now, all that's left is to plug in the actual values of log 11 and log 8 and solve. So log 11 is equal to approximately 1.04. And log 8 is equal to approximately 0 0.90. So I get x is equal to 1 plus 1.04 over 0 0.90 which is equal to one plus one point one six meaning x is equal to two point one six so this is my answer